See all the hammer marks on them, look. That's how they true them up. Oh. You support it on V blocks there and there, and you literally just hit them with a hammer until they're trued up. I'm sure there are better ways of doing it, but. Right, so your left hand case, you have a washer when you're assembling oil on everything, yeah? Well, I do, because you never know how long this is going to be sitting before it gets got, sort of gets fired up. So what you do is, on, on your bearing faces, put oil on, and on anything that's pushing up and down or rotating with a with a surface against the surface, you use cam lube. One. What that does, you've got oil, if it comes out the crankcase, you've got a reverse spiral in that. So it just pushes the oil back into the engine. Okay, that's him. You've got a snap ring, then you've got your washer. Over there. There. That's better. Right, that's that casing. Right, this one, you got lug on there. It's a hole. Oh yeah. So you have to get that and slide him into the hole like that. Otherwise, it won't rotate. So stop it rotating, rather. Bearing goes in. That's encased either side. That's your bearing there. So that's your two casings done. We've already pre-checked our crank end float. We know we're centred up pretty good within a couple of thou on these, so it doesn't matter which side you put these on. See all the hammer marks on them, look. That's how they true them up. Oh. You support it on V blocks there and there, and you literally just hit them with a hammer until they're trued up. I'm sure there are better ways of doing it, but right, you want a bit of grease on these just to hold them to the flywheels. Only a touch. And they have locating pins on them. You got a pin there? Yep. You put in, making sure it's on the pin. Your grease will just hold it on there then. Again on that side, just on the pin. Right, so that side there is our drive side. That's your drive side, so you offer that into there. Spread your rods. Stand him up right a minute. Block of wood, anything, just to stop when you lay it over. Otherwise, you push your crank pin back out. We know our rods are good. So you get your other case in. Right, originally, these were put together with what they call shellac. It's like a varnish. Yeah. I think it's crushed beetle shells or something weird. Um, but all I just put some clear silicone around them. Right, just want a little bit. Don't take a lot, just a tiny little bit. Because they're a pretty good fit, these casings normally, anyway. So just give it a seal, is it? Yeah, just, I mean, 
unless the casings are absolutely knackered, they generally don't leak very badly at all. Yeah. So just just give it a little helping hand, really. I stand him up. We don't want to lose our bearings, you see. Otherwise, they'll all fall off. Hitting. Let's get a start. Two longs, one short. Just want to push him through so you know it's in line, yeah? Crank rotation, all feels good. You want to get all of these through before you do anything up because otherwise you can get a jam on them and if you do it all up if you say you do those two up tight and that one there isn't completely lined up yeah. you're not trying to bash it through the hole and it will just muller it rotation you literally just nip them all the way round Check your crank again. It's all good. Right, then you give them a proper nip up then. It's all about feeling for it. If it nips up, then you know there's something wrong, you know? And these don't have to be frantically tight. I mean, that's tight enough. right instantly you can tell that's right I'll show you why in a minute right that's the crank case is done up now if you push that down to about there yeah and let it go that means your crankshaft in balance properly okay if There's it no wasn't what would happen it would go down to there and it would just stay there okay it doesn't move but that's under its own balance weights on the crank webs yeah so you let it go you know that's right okay that's pretty damn good so so if it wasn't doing that how would you it's even it? nipped up too tight your shims on the side yeah or it's out of balance, but highly unlikely that the, can, the crank will be out of balance. It's either you've got bearing tight sticking or those side shims, there's too much ten tension on them. We've got a nice play there, which is good. We know that's set to 12 thousandths of an inch. Right, so these are basically just studs that the engine has been built with, and they're not exactly the right length, so they're a bit loose. I just want to thread lock them in. It's about 
about right. push the oil pump on for the time being and we can drop it back out again but when it's only because the stand that is made you can't get remember we couldn't get the oil pump out right so you've got a little gauze thing goes in there slides up into there yeah i gotta make sure it's in the right way that should do us the looks of it oil pump scavenge pump desk it Right, we'll leave it at that for the moment. Just holding the mesh in. Okay. Crank still okay. Let's get that oil pump in. See, that's our 12th hour look. That's your end float that we set up previously. Okay. center anyway on the timing marks because of the balance on the camshaft okay right, he's in the middle there so if I put that tape on the bottom of there I then know when I wind that down to there We're in the middle. That's a good way of holding it at TDC. <coughs> right, let me remember how this goes together. Oh, bollocks, must have had that oil pump out again. Old Indian trick, that one. Keeps you on your toes. Yes, I think you do. And that won't go past the oil pump. So you've got to take the oil pump back out. I only do it to annoy myself. <laughs> I knew there was something. It's actually been quite a while since I've rebuilt one properly, like fully. Spring. Spiral drive. That one goes on last. Right, basically, that's in there, yeah? Push your oil pump back up. Doesn't matter where it is at the moment. Tighten him back up. Yeah, I can't remember the guy's name. This is the bloke who was asking a question about how to set it up. Okay. And it's it's very simple. Basically that is timed. The scavenge pump gear is timed for crankcase breathing. Yep. So you have to make sure it's in the right place. So we pinch him back up, making sure that's nice on the base. to make sure that's bang in the centre right that's bang in the centre right you want five sixteenths of an inch okay mm -hmm. now what you do that's got to be that slap bang in the centre and you push this in see that's turning that oil pump so you've mm -hmm. got to set that Five 
five sixteenths of an inch, yeah? Without moving that. <laughs> so let's put him back in the middle. Which is there. What you're looking for is see that hole there? Well that hole has got to be in the centre of that slot when that is set at five sixteenths of an inch and your timing mark is bang on. Okay. Because when Chris that spring loaded, your five sixteenths of an inch is when your outer casing's on where it sits. Yeah. Does that make sense? We're in the middle there, five sixteenths. Our hole is out. So we've gone too far. <clears throat> so we want to come back round that way. We we'll take that off. Take that off. Rotate that one that way. Push him back in the slot. Check that again. So when that's at five sixteenths of an inch, that hole is lined up, isn't it? Okay. So the guy who's asking the question is. Put your crank on your timing mark. Doesn't matter where you put your oil pump in first of all. Obviously put in that washer in because you can't get it in otherwise. And then you just move this around, pull that off, move that around until when that is at five sixteenths of an inch, your holes line up in the slot. Cool. And that's your scavenge pump and breather system timed up. So next is our camshafts. So we will, these are the bits that are going to rub and dry out straight away without oil around them so we'll put a bit of cam lube on them, hence why it's called cam lube. This is horrible, sticky, carcinogenic, horrible shit. Nice. Yeah. Right, so. Right, so we need a six thou shim washer underneath that, which is these. He goes on there. And the other underneath camera is the intake front, which is that one, I believe. Timing mark there, look. And that one. You've got a timing mark there on that one. And that one. Drops in. I remember rightly, so let's lube him up. It's quite easy to put two of them on instead of one, so you've got to keep an eye on them, yeah? So he drops in there, and you've got three timing marks. Pinion gear, front inlet gear, rear exhaust gear, and that's your other inlet cam there. So what you do is you drop him in, you want that to line up with that, you want your mark on there to line up with that. Right, so we only have one mark on this cam, and that's there, yeah? See? Mm -hmm. You've got two marks on this one. Which is... There. And there. So you've got to make sure you index it the right way, otherwise that camshaft will be miles out. So we know that the closer side of it is the way you want to be. Then you've got your two marks on there, three marks on there rather. So he goes in, you line that up with that, you line that up with that, with a tooth out there. Okay, so what I marked there, yeah? 
on our mark there. On your front intake cam. Yeah. And you're on your mark there. On your rear exhaust cam. And then your front cam. Wherever the mark is, it's on the inside on these somewhere. Oh no, it's not, it's there. So then we line up that, because that, you can't see what tooth that's going in. So that line there has to line up with that, then that just feeds your idler gear for the generator. So we'll lube him up. And he goes in. There. Okay. So you've got your mark there. Your mark there on that cam. You mark there on that cam, and you mark there on that cam. Yeah. So that's all your cam timing in. Okay. Right, so you only have six of those six star washers. Obviously that one's bigger. That one's bigger, so you can't put them on there. So then you need another two. One on there. One on there. And then you oil everything. So we know our scavenger pump's timed up. The only other thing we've got to put on now is your idler gear that drives the generator. You set your backlash on that later. You put your little washer behind. Fiber washer. Bit of oil. And your idler gear. Then you look for your little washer that you've lost. Here it is, look. He goes on there. that and we can put our outer cover on. This is where things possibly could get tight. Has been checked but it doesn't mean it will stay like the same as it was but yeah providing you follow the the basics they're they're pretty easy to do. Okay. You know if you if you look at it and think oh my god that line doesn't line up with that you've done something wrong because it's all very clearly marked. Yeah. Um, that's the only weird bit but once you've done it it's done. Stupid statement, wasn't it? Doing these, always, 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 always use a new gasket on them because they leak like a sieve otherwise. Right, okay. Right, they're all pinned and done. Let's oil that up. I've drilled all those, I've no idea. You put the new bushings in, they don't come with a hole. See these holes here? Mm. You have to drill them through so you've got an oil feed to them. So that's that basically. Make sure that little pocket valve there is working, which it is. Can be a bit of a wiggle getting these on. Line all the cams up. One of them don't like it. See how everything moves, look in the bushes, so you mm. can play around with it, keep wiggling it, jiggling it, and it'll go in the end. Make sure there's nothing stopping us. It's all good. That feels horribly tight, but let's just get us started. down in a few places. That is quite tight, let's give it a bit of oil in there. So how loose is loose and how tight is tight? 
Um, well, you don't want it all flopping around. If you've got massive play between it, it means the bushes are knackered there. Yeah. But that's too tight at the moment. But let's get it all wound over a few times and see what happens. So what could be the reason for the tightness then? Camshaft bushes slightly out of line. Too much tension on them. I'm going to have checked it once, but like I say, when you start putting everything back together again, yeah. it all changes, you know. So basically what you do... It could be the end of the crank nose is hitting, all sorts of things. So you take it apart, put each bit in individually, see where you, if you're getting a tight spot. Okay, yeah. And then if it's everything's free on each camshaft when you put it together, then you know that it's the mesh in between the gears somewhere. Okay. So it's just you've got to keep going at it. That is too tight, so. So what would, what did that end up to be? Just um... the end of the crank bearing, because I checked all the cam bearings. They're slightly tight, but I'm, I'd rather have them tight at the moment to bed in. So, but I didn't check the end of the cam shaft, crank shaft, because I didn't have the crank shaft in. find good these that when they've been used a little while, the screws are all loose and back up again. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's freeing up. Be all right. I'll take one shim out actually. Let's just have a look. No, that's got play. That's got play. So, you, what you don't want is it tight on your bearings that way. Yeah. So your bearings on your inner face and your outer face, if it's tight that way, that's what will spin the bearings, what happened before. Yeah. If it's tight rotationally, it will bed in. So I know that those three cams I can move side to side, and that one I can move side to side. So we're not tight that way. Yeah. So it's only rotational. So whatever's in there, that will bed itself in. That's fine. tension there yeah I think we're good mate plenty of oleo down the holes okay yeah it's freeing up every time you turn it so that's good that's your basic engine structure done now. We know it's all timed up. That's good. I like that. Next week on the workshop. Right, so that's your scavenge pump. So oil will feed in through that hole there. Winds round, and I'll show you the teeth in a minute. Just compresses in the teeth, chucks it back out that hole up into the tank.